My favorite ideas to bash on are the ones that have self-destruct buttons built into them already. Take for example the idea that all truth is relative. Because if all truth is relative, then at least one truth is not, and it takes itself apart. There are tons of examples of this. One of my favorites of these, favorites to bash on that is, because I think the idea itself is terrible, is one that was born in the 1920s. This idea is called logical positivism. The logical positivists who got together and kind of created this idea had a group of like-minded individuals, including mathematicians, philosophers, scholars of all kinds, who met in Vienna in the 1920s to discuss truth. And their conception of truth or meaningfulness comes from empiricism. Empiricism means you can touch it, you can smell it, you can see it, you can hear it. Somehow, at some level, all truth can be reduced to things that can be experienced or measured. Measurement is key. If you can't measure it, it's not real. And so the curvature of the earth, that's something you can measure. You, you can measure just about everything. It's awesome. This window into reality that has been opened by empiricism excited the logical positivists to no end. And so they codified an idea. The idea is this. All statements that are meaningful have at their root either measurement that's already taken place or measurement that could theoretically be taken, that could theoretically be done. They left a, a room open for hypothesis. So the idea is if you're talking about a soul, which is something that you can't smell or see or taste or touch or measure in any way and it's not made of matter, um, if it's not made of matter and it's not measurable, then when you talk about a soul, it's a meaningless garbage statement that doesn't mean anything. It's like talking about a it just doesn't have any meaning. Well, after several years of beating together and discussing the virtues of this idea and talking about the limits of measurement and how it works and thinking of themselves very intelligent for having come to the crux of meaning, somebody made a comment which kind of spoiled the fun. That statement, that idea, the central idea that they were discussing had a problem. It had a self-destruct button built into it, and here's why. All statements that are meaningful, and this is also a statement, must at their root, must be able to be proven using measurement. Well, what do you measure to prove that statement? You can't. The whole thing collapsed. It fell apart. The seeds of its destruction were already built into it. It was something that could not be true because in talking about itself, there was a paradox going on there. Another one is the idea that <laughs> nothing is true. Is that true? If so, it takes itself apart. Another one, if a rebel ever tells you to question everything, the appropriate response is why? <laughs> the thing about logical positivism that is frustrating though is that this idea hasn't gone away even though it takes itself apart because it only takes itself apart if you think about it critically. Um, a couple of notable logical positivists who speak as though they've kind of swallowed this idea um, include Bill Nye, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, when they talk about ideas related to philosophy, they will try to use an empiricist mode of thought that says that if you can't measure it, taste it, see it, or smell it, then it doesn't exist, which is an extremely similar, extremely problematic idea. How do you prove that statement true? You can't, at least not with empiricism. So, yeah, these, these ideas take themselves apart. We're probably going to bring up more of these in the future. I, I love the self-referential quality of them. These statements that take themselves apart prove one thing beautifully. Some things are false. Some things are wrong. And if some things are wrong, then other things are true. If you can think of any other examples of ideas that have self-destruct buttons built into them that are self-referentially wrong, please leave them in the comments below. I love to read these sorts of ideas. And be sure to subscribe below if you haven't already, and give this thumb a like. Thank you very much. I'm so meta, even this acronym, I-S-M-E-T-A, is meta.